Hey, what's up everyone? It's your girl Brain Shanae and today I have some bookish mail that I wanted to share with you. So if you want to know what's inside of these packages, please stay tuned. started I like to say sorry my hair is I just put my hair in a bun and everything I took my braids out and everything got my hair washed and all that so it's in its natural phase right now <laughs> even though it wasn't a protective hair hairstyle with my braids um but I took my braids out because I'm going to get be getting my hair done in a couple of days for my uh family uh photos with my family my loved ones um so yeah so sorry about that if y'all don't like it but then again sorry I ain't sorry <laughs> but anyways okay so the first package I want to open is this box right here um this is from Amazon I think I ordered something from them I don't really remember I need to like I don't keep track of my orders and I think that is a huge problem but anywho let me go ahead and open this first package for you as soon as I can find my box cutter okay found it so here we go so I'm gonna open this one first and see what's inside it like I said I'm terrible at keeping order of keeping track of what I order I need to uh, do a better job maybe I'll, that'll be something that I put in my journal because I'm gonna start journaling and stuff like that so maybe that'll be something a page or so for orders so let's see okay so I ordered some little sticky things right here for my for my when I annotate books so I have that I think it has like three things worth in there so I got some of those and then I got this book, which came out this month, and I cannot wait to read it, but don't know when I'm going to read it, but I do plan on reading it because I love this author, and this is her first, like, romance book, contemporary book, and that is Instant Karma by Marissa Meyer. Uh, like, look at the cover. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. It's blue, first off. Blue's my favorite color, and... Uh, I just think this is so cute and I'm really I'm really proud of Marissa Marissa Meyer going out going out of her comfort zone on, and doing this book um so when you take the cover off it's blue of course with silver foiling right there instant karma which I think it sounds amazing so let me go ahead and read the synopsis for you so we can both we can all find out what it's about so it says chronic overachiever Prudence Daniels is always quick to cast judgment on the lazy, rude, and, and arrogant residents of her coastal town. Her dreams of karmic justice are fulfilled when, after a night out with her friends, she wakes up with the sudden ability to cast instant karma on those around her. Prue giddily makes use of the power, punishing everyone from public vandals to mean gossips. But there's one person on whom, on whom her powers consistently backfire. Quint Erickson. Her slacker of a lab partner. Quint is annoyingly cute and impressively noble, especially when it comes to his work with the rescue center for local sea animals. When Prue resigns herself to working at the rescue center for extra credit, she begins to uncover truths about baby otters, environmental upheaval, and and romance across signals. Not necessarily, not necessarily in that order. Her newfound karmic insights reveal how thin the line is between virtue and vanity, generosity and greed, love and hate, and fate. So this sounds something, it sounds pretty good. Now I will say this, oh, the print is really small, so I'm like, oh my god, Marissa Meyer. I remember her print, oh, Lord. I'm not sure when I'm going to read it, but I know I'm, I want to because this is something Marissa hasn't done before, a contemporary type of book, romance in a way or what have you. So I definitely look forward to reading this. So this is out of the package so I have this book uh, karma or instant karma by Marissa Meyer the next package is right here it's also Amazon so let's open this I'm terrible at opening packages so this may take a minute <laughs> or maybe not okay so I had ordered this book which is part of the cruel prince series by Holly Black. I have not read any of the books and so I, I ordered all of them but I got this book The Queen of Nothing which is the third and final book of the series but I know the Elf Flame stories or whatever of the cruel something like that is going to be coming out so I ordered that from Alcrate because they have an exclusive and I'm like I might as well do it. I might as well dive right into the series. I heard I hear mixture of reviews. Some people don't like it. Some people really enjoy it. Um, So I thought like it's Faye so I might as well jump into this world and see what I think of it um so I got this book the queen of nothing by Holly Black 
So this is the third book once again. I love the cover. I like the original cover and it's beautiful. Um, and then if I take the dust jacket off, ooh, it has a snake with a crown. So I thought that is pretty cool. Um, so for this, oh, let me get that. So for this, the synopsis says, he will be the destruction of the crown and the ruination of the throne. Power is much easier to acquire than it is to hold on to. Jude learned this lesson when she released her control over the wicked uh, king Cardin in exchange for immeasur immeasurable power. Now as the ex exiled mortal queen of fairy, uh, or fairy, uh, Jude is left ruling reeling from Cardin's betrayal. She bides her time, determined to reclaim everything he took from her. Opportunity arrives in the form of her deceptive twin sister, Tyron, whose immortal life is in peril. Jude must risk venturing back into the treacherous fairy court and confront her lingering feeling for Cardin, if she wishes to save her sister. But a flame is not as she left it. War is brewing as Jude slips deep into or sleep or deep, excuse me, <laughs> as Jude slips deep within in enemy lines, she becomes ensnared into the conflicts or in the conflicts bloody politics. And when a terrible curse is unleashed, panic spreads throughout the land, forcing her to choose between her ambition and her humanity. From number one New York Times bestselling author Holly Black comes the highly anticipated and jaw-dropping finale to the Folk of the Air series. So it's the Folk of the Air series. So this is the third one and already it sounds pretty good. So yeah, like he says, his voice is soft and I make the mistake of looking into his black eyes at his wicked curving mouth. But your beauty will fade, he continues, just as softly speaking like a lover. And all you have and all you are and all you are will rot away to nothing you'll be you will be nothing you are nothing whoa that was deep so yeah so <laughs> i'm definitely this is something that i might be reading in january or the series who knows i definitely am looking forward to this book like this is already amazing so i wonder how the first book is hope it's not slow but who knows <laughs> so i got this book then here it is have a next package right here so let's open this one this I think has like three books in it I could be wrong but I think it does uh, let's see let me open it okay so yeah it does so I had ordered this book because I've been wanting to read it and I got it in this edition because it's a larger print and I like books that are a little bit larger I'm like it's I'm 27, but sometimes with them small words in the books, I'm like, oh my gosh, y'all, y'all killing me. <laughs> and I, and my vision is perfect. The only thing is, I guess you couldn't say it's not that perfect. I'm nearsighted, so I can't see far away. But so I read, but still the words can be so small to me. It's just crazy. My, my husband was like, you need to go to the eye doctor and check your eyes. And, and I'm like, I'm fine. But anyways, I got this book, the um, large print edition, When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole. I'm finally going to be reading this. I think I'm going to be reading this in December uh, before the year is out because this is one of the books I want to read before the year is over. Um, so I definitely want, I definitely want to pick this up but I wanted to get the large um print edition so this is what the large print edition looks like and the words are bigger so yay but it says rear window meets get out in this gripping thriller in which the gentrific uh, gentrification of a Brooklyn neighborhood takes on a sinister new meaning Sydney Green is Brooklyn born and raised but her beloved neighborhood seems to change every time she blinks condos are sprouting like weeds for sale signs are popping up overnight and the neighbors she's known all her life are disappearing to hold on to her community's past and present, Sydney channels her frustration into a walking tour and finds an unlikely and unwanted assistant in one of the new arrivals to the block, her neighbor, Theo. But Sydney and Theo's deep dive into history quickly becomes a dizzying de descent into paranoia and fear. Their neighbors may not have moved to the suburbs after all, and the push to revitalize the community may be more deadly than advertised. When does coincidence become conspiracy? Where do people go when gentrification pushes them out? Can Sydney and Theo um, trust each other or themselves long enough to find out before they, too, disappear? So, yes, I love this so much. It says, Alyssa Cole is an award-winning um, New York Times notable author of hysterical, historical, contemporary, and sci-fi romance. So, yeah, I think this is something right up my alley. It's a thriller. Everybody's been talking about it and raving about it on Goodreads and Instagram, Twitter booktube so i'm definitely going to be reading this in december so definitely watch out for that december tbr when that comes up but i literally just posted <laughs> i did my november tbr so yeah i got a little bit of time but not that much time because literally like in the next week and a half or so it's gonna be thanksgiving already in the states so that's crazy anyway so i got this book 
So, here are the other two books that go with Queen of Nothing. So we got The Cruel Prince by Holly Black and we got The Wicked King by Holly Black. So I have all three now. And the covers are beautiful. I do like the original covers. I know a lot of people have the um, Barnes and Nobles editions, the exclusive editions, but I decided to go with these. So for the first book, I'm going to read the synopsis for this one. Um, it says, guard your mortal heart. Jude was seven when her parents were murdered and she and her sisters were stolen away to live in the treacherous high court of fairy. Ten years later, Jude wants nothing more than to belong there, despite her mortality. But many of the Fae despise humans, especially Prince Cardin, the youngest and wickedest, wickedest son of the High King. To win a place at the court, she must defy him and face the consequences. As Jude becomes more deeply embroiled in palace intrigues and deceptions, she discovers her own capacity for trickery and bloodshed. But as betrayal threatens to, to drown the courts of fairy in violence, Jude will need to risk her life in a dangerous alliance to save her sisters and fairy itself. It says from New York, New York Times of selling author Holly Black comes the first book, comes the first book in a stunning new trilogy filled with twists and enchantment as one girl learns the meaning of true power when she finds herself caught in a web of royal fairy intrigue. Oh, this sounds really good. And so when I take the just jacket, just jacket off, ooh, I like, I like a lot. This is cool. I like this. So yeah, so this is the first book of the trilogy. So here is this, The Cruel Prince. The next one is The Wicked King. Love the cover. And this one says, you must be strong enough to strike and strike and strike again without tiring. The first lesson is to make yourself that strong. Jude has bound the wicked king, Cardin, to her and made herself the power behind the throne. Navigating the constantly shifting political alliances of fairy would be difficult enough if Cardin were biddable. But he does everything in his power to humiliate and undermine her, even as his fascination with her remains undiminished. When it becomes all too clear that someone close to Jude means to betray her, threatening her life and the lives of everyone she loves, Jude must uncover the traitor and fight her own complicated feelings for Cardin to maintain control as a moral in a fairy world. From author Holly Black comes an enchanting and bloodthirsty sequel to the New York Times bestselling a novel, The Cruel Prince. So, yes. I don't know why I'm just not reading the series, but I plan on doing so in the year of 2021. So we have this, the, what is it? The Folk of, a Folk of the Air series. So we have that and I plan on reading that. So pretty much binge reading this, this series. And then the next package I got is from Penguin Teen, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm going ahead and open this one. Eh, if I can. I just did an, an epic failure to open this package. So I'm going to use my box color, even though this is not a box. All right. Ooh, okay. So I am a Penguin Teen influencer, and they asked if I wanted a, a paperback copy of this because I have not read this, the books yet. But I wanted to do so, and that is War Girls by um, Chachi Ambushi. I can't pronounce the name. I'm so sorry if I ruined it and slaughtered it. But yeah, so I wanted to get this and wanted to read this. I heard nothing but good things about it, but I don't really hear a lot of it in BookTube. So I'm like, okay, let me read War Girls. Um, it says, the year is 2172. Climate change and nuclear disasters have rendered much of Earth unlivable. Only the lucky ones have escaped to space colonies in the sky. In a war-torn Nigeria, battles are fought using flying uh, deadly mechs and soldiers are outfitted with bionic limbs and artificial organs meant to protect them from the harsh radiation-heavy climate. Across the nation, as the years-long uh, civil war wages on, survival becomes the only way of life. Two sisters, Anyi and Ifi, dream of more. Their lives have been marked by violence and political unrest. Still, they dream of peace, of hope, of a future together, and they're willing to fight an entire war to get there. So that sounds from, sounds really amazing. So I cannot wait to read this. Thank you, Penguin Team. And then the next one, this is going to be coming out on the 17th of this month, which is November. So let's open this one. And I'm excited for this too. So once again, November 17th. So keep your eye out on it or pre-order it either way. And this is the second book to War Girls. And this is Rebel Sisters. Like look at that cover. Oh, it's beautiful. I like it. Author of Beasts Made of Night, by the way. So, oh, it's so cute. Oh, I love this cover. It's peachy and look at the book. Oh my God. I love this so much. 
So this is the second, the sequel of War Girls. And the synopsis for this one, it says, when you've defined, when you're defined by war, what's left for when the war ends. It's been five years since the uh, Bifurin War ended. If Ify or Ife is now living where she's always dreamed, she's always dreamed, the space colonies. She is a respected high ranking medical officer and has dedicated her life to helping refugees like herself rebuild in the colonies. Back in a recovering Nigeria, Uzo, a young synth uh, helps an aid worker, Esfeng, restore images and, re and details of the war held in the technology of destroyed androids. Yuzo, Efeng, and the rest of their team are working to preserve memories of the many lives lost, despite the government's best efforts to eradicate any signs that the war ever happened. Though they are working toward common goals of helping those who suffered, Ifi and Uzo are worlds apart. But when a mysterious a virus breaks out among the children in the space colonies, their paths collide. Ifi uh, makes it her mission to figure out what's causing the deadly disease. And doing so means going back to the homeland she thought she left behind forever. So this already sounds really deep. So yeah, so I definitely plan on reading these real soon. But like I said, this comes out November 17th. So if you want, I, I, was, I really suggest you like pre-order it and also get a copy of this too so you can binge read them. Um, but that is it, you guys. That is all my bookish mail that I have for you today. Or actually, it's going to be part one. So this is book, uh, bookish mail part one because there's other bookish mail that I want to share with you. But there's so much that I can't just put it all in one video because the video will just be so long. So this is, like I said, officially bookish mail part one. And then I'll be doing part two later on. Um, but anyways, I really hope you enjoyed um, my bookish mail and this video. Um, if you did, please give me a thumbs up. Also hit that subscribe button and that bell to be notified when I upload more videos in the future. But thank you guys for, uh, so much for watching. Stay healthy and stay safe. See ya!